a virtual reality game is being used to manage pain. And now it just received $29 million in funding to pursue FDA approval so that your doctor can prescribe it to you. We'll cover all of that and more in this episode of What's New in Games for Health. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Digital Doc Games, the channel all about games and health. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell to be alerted of when new videos drop. The community question for this episode is tell me about a time a digital experience helped your pain. Drop your response in the comments and I'll make sure to get back to you. When VR started to hit store shelves in 2016, there was a huge amount of excitement around the technology that had the power to take you anywhere. This excitement was not at all lost on the medical community. In fact, when I first started medical school around that same time, I came in determined to find VR solutions to our common health problems, and I was not alone. Since releasing, VR is now used in many different areas of the hospital, including the emergency room, oncology floors, the OR, or in burn clinics. Central to these different use cases was the same overall idea, VR for pain management. There are two ways virtual reality is being used to treat pain. The first is distraction. Engaging in thoughts or activities that distract attention from pain is one of the most commonly used strategies for controlling pain. A kid falls down, give them a lollipop. Distraction works because as humans, we are only so good at multitasking and our brains literally cannot handle the competing signals of pain and information processing. The best VR games lift you out of your current environment and throw you into a completely different world making them a pretty powerful tool for distraction therapy. But distraction is only half the story. There's research showing how VR to an extent hijacks your brain. That voice you hear is the voice of Laura Garcia, a clinical psychologist working at Applied VR in the development of VR therapeutics for chronic pain. So there is that obvious benefit of using VR, but then if that was the only benefit, then the best, let's say the best treatment would have a person be in VR most of their day. But at the end of the day, that's not feasible. This is a technology that has the potential to train people in skill sets that they can then use outside of the VR environment. These types of education and pain management skills are the cornerstone of cognitive behavioral therapy, a mainstay in chronic pain treatment that is traditionally delivered through in-person training sessions. The prospect of doing this remotely in a more engaging way through VR that sounds like a win-win. When COVID-19 hit, there became a greater need than ever to reach patients at home. So Applied VR developed Ease VRX, their new digital therapeutic for chronic pain management that very smartly utilizes both the distraction and CBT pain management strategies. There are entertainment games, they have some attention games. We also have interactive educational modules. We allow people to have a, a concrete understanding of what happens in their bodies when they're in pain, and also most importantly, what happens in their body when they engage in some relaxation practice. To test EVRX in action, the Applied VR team designed an eight-week-long at-home VR study. The team split 179 participants with chronic lower back pain into two groups. One of the groups played the Ease VRX game, and the other group played a sham VR experience that had participants watching footage of nature in VR, but was not designed to be therapeutic or immersive. Laura served as the principal investigator for this study, so I asked her if she could sit down with me and break down what they found. So starting about week three or four, we started noticing that people in the ESVRX group, they were having greater benefits from these virtual reality treatment than those in the control group. What's interesting is that those people in the VR, ESVRX group, by the end of treatment, they had significant reductions in their pain. So pain intensity was reduced by at least 40%. Then you get at least 50% of reductions in interference with activity, interference with mood and stress, and interference with sleep. And then when you compare those reductions with the sham VR, most of them were clinically significant. 
So what we found is that, hey, we got these benefits, these huge improvements, and they are better than the control. They are better than that novelty and that placebo effect. Just to put some of that in perspective, when we talk about clinical significance or a clinically meaningful reduction in symptoms, Laura told me we're usually happy if we even get a 25 or 30% reduction in pain. EaseVRX had a 42% reduction in pain intensity. 42. Well, clearly, I'm not the only one impressed with this study. Applied VR announced that they secured $29 million in funding, which they will use to pursue FDA approval for EaseVRX. It's no coincidence that this news came out just a few weeks after the publication of the EaseVRX study. Multiple components of the EaseVRX study make it a great jumping off point to seek FDA approval. For one, the length of the study is comparable to a standard eight-week CBT program. So it's much easier to draw comparisons between the in-person and virtual experiences. Secondly, and very importantly, by including a sham VR placebo group in the study design, Applied VR was able to decipher how much of the therapeutic effect was specifically from the EaseVRX therapy versus just any overlying VR effect. This type of thoughtful design is what we need to bring in this new era of digital therapeutics and FDA approval will only maximize that effort. One of the benefits of getting an FDA approval and commercializing a therapeutic like EZVRX with applied VR is that then everyone will become more aware of VR therapeutics and that potential and that solution. And then you would see improvements on the products themselves. And that's really where I feel like I'm, I'm really looking forward to. Well, that is what is new in Games for Health. If you want to read more about the study, I have provided the link in the description below. If you like this video, please feel free to like, comment, and share. My favorite part of running this channel is interacting with you. So get in those comments and say hi. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you next time on Digital Doc Games.